today as a minister of the gospel and a pastor, um, I hear often what I believe many lay people do, all of us that are in churches. We often hear people um, give as an excuse why they won't come to church. Well, they were burned in some church experience somewhere and churches are usually full of hypocrites and all that kind of stuff. And it reminded me of an experience I had, probably I was in junior high, maybe barely high school. And in the church that my father pastored, there was a man who was totally harmless. He was up in years, I don't really know how old he was, I just remember that his hair was gray. He was he had mental illness issues. He was very faithful at church. Um, he was pretty unkempt. Um, he always had quite a stubble. He didn't shave very often. He didn't wash very often. Um, and in those days, many years ago, when I was that age, which was shortly after fire was discovered, um, you always had church on Sunday night. You always had Sunday night service, and the Sunday night services often featured a little more singing, a little more informality, and all, almost always a period of time called testimony time. People would be invited to just get up and hopefully keep it brief, but tell how God helped them this previous week, or just something to praise God, to thank Him for publicly, which is a wonderful practice. It's biblical. But virtually every time, this man, and I can't remember for sure, but I think his name was Harley, he would get to his feet, never made a lot of sense, kind of mumble around, and nobody ever took offense at it. Uh, my father would let him go for a bit, and then he, he'd kind of thank him, and you know that was a cue that he took, and he would sit back down. The people next to him never, you know, were offended by him. They, you know, they were fine with him. And <clears throat> I found out later, overhearing my dad talk to my mom, that there was, on this particular Sunday night, the routine, saying, testimonies, Harley gets up, mumbles around, um, makes no sense. No one mistreats him. They put up with him, very patient with him. But there was that evening a family looking for a church. And they'd moved to Eugene, and they were trying churches out. I don't didn't know them, but I heard the story that when they came to our church that particular night, I don't know what they expected, but I'm sure it was embarrassing maybe to my father, who could see them sitting out there in the audience, and he sees Harley gets up, and Harley's making no sense. And, you know, this might be embarrassing for a new couple, new family looking for a church. It turned out that the single reason that family gave my father for making our church their home church for years was because of Harley and how he was treated. And they noticed that though they could immediately see that he was mentally struggling, nevertheless, they saw the kindness and the patience um, with which he was treated, and that won them over. They said, this is the kind of church we want to go to. That's very simple. And I think that we are so driven nowadays to make sure that everything is perfect, everything's choreographed, the music's got to be, you know, equal to, you know, concerts the world can put up. We have to have everything just perfect when I don't think people are looking for that. And if they are, frankly, they're barking up the wrong tree. They need to look for the place where God is and where people are loved and cared for. That's what the church is to be about. So 
I would rather have, and sometimes it's hard to practice this, but I think it's better to have a situation where you put up with a Harley who is a bit out of the normal, but people see this is what a church really ought to be. I believe that's what they're hungry for. So by the grace of God, we need to present that kind of picture of what the church really is. Father in heaven, help us to escape the practices really of the world and the aping of what the world does in an effort to get people to come to church. In the end, Lord, they want, I believe, if they're genuinely hungry, they want to see you and they want to see people that love you. And they want to see mercy and kindness and patience that this world is so sorely in need of. So help us, Lord, as churches, as individuals in churches, to create this kind of a welcoming atmosphere. atmosphere that will draw people ultimately to you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.